Hey, it's Memorial Day here on the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash I thought we'd talk a little bit about quarterbacks before we dive into the week. I mean, it's it's the week. I mean, the week has started, you know, it's it's Monday, but it's also Memorial Day. A lot of people are off work and a lot of people are, uh, you know, having picnics and things like that. So it's like it's the week. It's the start of the week, but it's not entirely the start of the week. It's something a little bit different. Um, don't know exactly uh, how to term it, but we're still here. We're still going to have a little bit of pit video content for you today on the morning pit and and it's quarterback week on pantalair.com today we're starting quarterback week our breakdown of the quarterback position which means something pretty big it means we're only about 10 weeks away from the start of training camp we we, we scheduled this out we planned this out to like get to the beginning of august and we're you know because there's basically 10 positions a quarterback running back receiver tight end o-line dnd tackle linebacker corner safety um we could probably make it like 12 or 13 positions if we went offensive tackles offensive guard centers but instead we go uh you know we take the o-line as one but anyways 10 positions and no love for special teams um total classic move by us uh but it's 10 positions so we're like okay let's plan it out we'll go 10 one per week uh to get up to the start of training camp and that means today may 27th is the day we have to start this is when we've got to go uh, with the quarterback position. So we're starting quarterback week on Panther.com. So I thought, well, this would be a good day to talk about quarterbacks. I mean, it's not like we don't talk about quarterbacks all the time. Anyway, we had a big episode on Nate Yarnell last week, and we'll probably, you know, tap into some of that today. Um, but I thought we could talk about quarterbacks a little bit. Expectations, hype. Uh, the last time you felt good about a pick quarterback, beyond the obvious. Um and then about the quarterback position this year. Is it the biggest question facing this team? Is the quarterback position? I mean, I think for most teams that are breaking in a new starter, even someone with a couple of games of starting experience uh, in their back pocket, I, I think for most teams breaking in a new starter, it's, um, you know, it, it, it is the biggest question. But I wonder, is it the biggest question for Pitt? this season so let's just jump around to a bunch of quarterback topics so they, you know something to listen to while you're mowing the lawn or uh you know, hopefully watch the video while you're uh, or have the video playing while you're mowing the lawn uh let's talk a bunch of quarterback stuff here on memorial day on the morning pit youtube.com slash pandalaircom yeah memorial day you know it's it's always one of those holidays it's, it's like labor day or any of these like monday holidays but really memorial day and labor day they're like picnic holidays but I much prefer to have the picnic on Sunday. You know, it's, you know, Monday, I mean, you know, everybody's got to go back to work tomorrow. Kids have to go back to school tomorrow. It's not like, oh, you can stay up and get rowdy tonight. I mean, I don't know if anybody really gets rowdy on Memorial Day or Labor Day anyway, but if you're going to have people over, the day to do it was yesterday. Because then you can, you know, you can stay a little bit later. You can have a few extra cold ones. The kids can stay up a little bit later because they don't have school today. A lot of people don't have to go into work today. Um, so, you know, any of these like Monday picnic holidays, I'd much rather have the picnic on Sunday. So hopefully that's what you did. Or if you prefer to do it on, on, on the Monday, then I hope you're doing it today and I hope you're enjoying it. Be the way we'll get a little bit of pit sports talk here on the morning pit, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. We always ask you to do just like uh, this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The subscribe button's right down there, youtube.com slash pantalaircom. That way you won't miss any of our pit video content. And of course, check out the website panther lair.com. We'll be talking a lot about quarterbacks this week. And we kind of have a structure to it. You know, today we have our five biggest questions uh, about the position. Um, tomorrow we'll be breaking down sort of the personnel comings and goings what players they lost from last year's quarterback roster who they added this offseason uh wednesday we'll break down the depth chart at least projected as we see it we'll have some bold predictions on thursday and then on friday we'll have the top five quarterbacks of the Pat and era number one's easy number two is not too hard either three four and five we might have that we'll, we'll have a whole episode about that we might do that on i don't know because we'll have that article will run on friday but friday is usually our mailbag day maybe we'll have to do the mailbag on thursday just to talk about the top five i mean like who do you put after pickett and peterman <laughs> like you run out of options pretty quick now i mean it's 10 years those guys were the starters for six of those 10 years so you, you only have like four other seasons to choose from right there's 2017 um 2022 and 2023 i guess there's only nine years right um 
a light bulb flashing over over me. I, I don't know if that's coming through on the video or not. Um, oh yeah, this is this is year number ten. So in nine seasons, six of the nine are are accounted for by Kenny Pickett and Nathan Peterman. So you only have a few other options. But I mean, you're talking about guys like you know on the long end, uh, you know Max Brown and Ben DiNucci, or even Chad Boytick. If you want to go back that far uh, to more recent history, obviously Keaton Slovis, Phil Dracovic, and Christian Bayer, three transfers who ultimately, I mean, Slovis let him do an eight and four record at least, you know, in, in the, in the regular season. Um, and even had something to do with a few of those wins and a few of those losses. Dracovic and, and Bayer, not, not, not quite so much on their resume that they're going to, uh, you know, tout from their time at Pitt. Regardless though, that's not easy figuring out who those top other three top three quarterbacks i'm gonna have to look back and see what we wrote last year because we did this feature last year we did this uh like five days of quarterback talk last year in the same format with the questions and the comings and goings and the depth chart the bold predictions and then the top five of the narduzzi era and i don't know like I, i'd be really curious of who we put in at three four and five it might have been like Wojtek Danucci Brown or something you know I, I mean like Keaton Slovis that's a tough situation man I, I mean like that's a tough situation it was a tough situation with the offensive coordinator it was a tough situation after he got hurt in the Tennessee game um, I think it took him a long time to come back from that injury he suffered in the Tennessee game I don't think he was really right for a while, if not the entire rest of the regular season. I guess Nick Patty. I didn't mention Nick Patty. We could put Nick Patty in there. I mean, does Nick Patty make the cut as one of the top five quarterbacks in the Narduzzi era? He was 2-0 and as a starter, right? The Delaware game in 2019 and the Sun Bowl at the end of the 2022 season. Um, didn't put up great stats in either one of those games, but made some giant game-winning plays in the Sun Bowl. Made a big game-winning play in the uh, UCF game in 2019, threw a touchdown pass, you know, ran for a couple of touchdowns against Florida state in 2020. I want to say after Kenny Pickett uh, got hurt. Um, so I guess Nick Paddy would have to be in that top five, but, but Keaton Slovis, you know, going back to him and I, I it, it's funny to sort of uh, move quickly from a Nick Paddy conversation to a Keaton Slovis conversation, given how much those two are sort of intertwined in pit fans uh, minds. Um, and maybe one should have started the other over the other, or maybe they got it right, whatever it may be. Um, I think Keaton Slovis could have been better than he was. You know what I mean? I think Keaton Slovis could have done better than he did. And I think there were some factors that conspired against him, not entirely out of his control. I mean, he takes some blame and, and should take some blame for some of the things that happened here in that season. Uh, but I think the offensive coordinator was it was a difficult situation. I think the offensive coordinator didn't believe in him, um, might not have picked him, which I mean it comes back to the the conversation of Pat Narduzzi landing a transfer quarterback before the offensive coordinator was hired, uh, and and that's a whole separate discussion we could have another time. Maybe we'll have that this week. I don't know, um, but I I don't think Frank Signetti had full confidence in Keaton Slovis. Uh, and, and I think it showed to some extent. I, I think some of the issues that presented themselves with the offense this past season were there in 2022 as well and, and held back the effectiveness of, of that unit. Uh, but I, I think Keaton Slovis was a good player. Um, I think he was in a challenging situation and one that didn't necessarily fit him. And maybe maybe if Mark Whipple had stayed another year, um, Slovis might have performed at a higher level. And he might have had Jordan Addison to throw to. But he didn't have either of those things. He didn't have Whipple and he didn't have Addison. And uh, so we have to judge him on what he had and what he did. He didn't do a whole lot, but he went eight and four. I mean, I think we start comparing like records as a starting quarterback. He's one of the few outside of Pickett and Peterman and Patty, I guess, uh, and Nate Yarnell who have a, a winning record as a starting quarterback under Pat Narduzzi. I guess, you know, Chad Boytick. Um, I guess Chad Wojcik would have been two and zero under Pat Narduzzi because he he won the Youngstown State game, uh, and Akron. But I think by the end of the Akron game, Nate Peterman had taken over, so he started the next week at Iowa and lost that game. Um, you know I don't think Max Brown had a winning record. I don't think Ben DiNucci had a winning record as a starter. Uh, Patty did. Uh, obviously, Vare did not, and obviously Dracovic did not. 
Nate Arnell is two and one as a starter. Nick Patty was two and zero as a starter. So I mean, you have a small group of starting quarterbacks under Pat Narduzzi who have a winning record as as the starter. <laughs> Uh, but again, I mean, so much of it is skewed by the fact that six out of the nine years were just two guys, right? I mean, it's hard to compare the other, you know, the other guys in, in anything approaching like a volume stat when, you know, so much of the playing time and the games and the starts were taken up by Kenny Pickett and Nathan Peterman. Um, so that's a, that's a challenging one. But I, I was thinking about like hype and excitement for the quarterback position. You know, I think there's some tempered enthusiasm or cautious optimism however you want to you know whatever two-word phrase you want to you want to use for it there's something along those lines for Nate Yarnell this year um yeah I mean I, I I talked a lot last week about how his stats kind of compared to the rest of the ACC at least you know while accounting for a small sample size he was one of the best he had some of the best stat lines of any quarterback in the conference um, again, with only 70 dropbacks, so pretty small sample size. I mean, that's like less than two games for a lot of these guys. Uh, and so, But, I mean, I think there's a little bit of excitement for him and hope that he might be able to play at a high level and, and lead this offense. But I wouldn't say there's – it's not overwhelming excitement. It's not a lot of hype. But then I was trying to think of, like, when was the last time there was genuine excitement and hype for a, a pit starting quarterback? Like, even going 2020 into 2021, I don't know if people were... I mean, people were excited about Kenny Pickett coming back, right? We were, If you recall, if you've, if you've been around for a little while, we were live that night. It was a Wednesday night live stream, and in the middle of that Wednesday night live stream, Kenny Pickett announced that he was coming back. And, and it was no... Like, I, I remember it was a big reaction. It was a big pop on, on the show um, because it, it sort of solidified the quarterback position. It, it eliminated one of the biggest questions facing the team that year. But I and I think people were excited about it. They certainly didn't expect him to be at the level he was at. And it's not like he had a great year in 2020. I think he had great moments, but on the whole, he didn't have a great year. Um, I think coming out of 2017, after the Miami game, when he really led the upset win over over Miami at, at uh, Heinz Field, there was a lot of hype then. I think there was a lot of excitement about Kenny Pickett heading into 2018. Legitimate questions and conversations about not just if he will win a Heisman, but could he win a Heisman as a sophomore? I mean, it was it was that there was that level of hype and excitement. And I don't think he he didn't live up to it in 2018. But he also had Sean Watson as his offensive coordinator, right? Um, and they had a really good running game, which went a long way in kind of changing what he was able to do you go into 2019 you have mark whipple with Pickett, and and i think there was some i i mean maybe you guys remember better than i do um there might have been some excitement for Pickett and what he might be able to do in mark whipple's offense but at the same time any excitement about anything related to pitt's offense was was pretty tempered um because of how bad they had been in 2018 uh, or how ineffective they had been with the passing game in 2018 so i don't know if the excitement was quite there and you know the bowl game win over eastern michigan did little to create hype for pickett heading into 2020 uh and then obviously everything that happened between march and september of 2020 sort of dampened everyone's enthusiasm for everything uh you know, 2015 into 2016, I'm not sure that people were over the moon about Nathan Peterman. And and let's be honest, Nathan Peterman in 2016 was just okay. Just okay. He had one great game. Now, it just so happened to be on the biggest stage against the biggest opponent in the biggest moment of his life, he had a great game. But he had one great game. I mean, you want to call the Syracuse game a great game? I don't think any coach anywhere would tell you that game was great for anything. Um, I've never seen more angry and disappointed coaches and players after a win than I saw after Pitt's game against Syracuse that year. That 76-61 game, it was just absurd. I mean, James Conner, like an offensive guy, was was sick about how that game went. Pat Narduzzi was unhappy about how that game went. Um, and, and I don't think there was a lot of... Uh, you know, nobody was sitting around saying like, wow, Nathan Peterman might be a first round draft pick. The only reason Nathan Peterman ever got himself into any kind of draft conversation was the Clemson game. And again, he played great and it was the biggest possible stage. It was the biggest game of his life. And he stepped up to the plate and played 
great. He was one of several guys who had a great game that day. But the rest of his career, certainly the rest of that season, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I remember having questions about Nathan Peterman five, six games into the year of like, is this guy really any good? I mean, really? Now, Clemson game changes all of that, for sure. But I don't think there was a lot of hype and excitement for him leading into 2016 uh, based on what he did in 2015. Uh, and the Clemson game kind of came out of nowhere as a result. I, I think there was excitement about Chad Boytick heading 2013 into 2014. Uh, after the Pizza Bowl, when Boytick came in and replaced Tom Savage at halftime because Savage got hurt. Um, and Boytick, you know, led them to a victory. I think he rushed for one or two touchdowns. Uh, had a good game there and I think that created some hype and excitement for 2014 and what he could be I mean they they ended up not being good uh, as we know but I think there was some excitement that offseason I don't remember there being a ton of excitement um, prior to 2013 like were people really pumped up for Tom Savage you know at, coming off a six and seven season which I think always is, is a factor I mean you don't have a returning quarterback who just led you to 10 or 11 wins and so, you know, you don't know how much excitement there's going to be. You know, 2012 with Tino, I think everybody was done with Tino Sinceri by that point. They were done with him before that. You know, like 2008, I think people were excited about Bill Stahl um, because the feeling was if they had had, if they'd been able to keep Stahl healthy in 2007, not only would they have gotten that West Virginia win, but they would have won like seven, eight, nine games. Uh, because they had LaShawn McCoy, because they had this defense that turned out to be great. And so I think there was a lot of belief that offseason after 2007, there were a lot of people who felt like, oh man, they're going to get Stahl back. They're going to have McCoy back. They're going to have McKillop back. They're going to have all these great defensive linemen, and they're going to have Bill Stahl, and it's going to be awesome. So I think there was some hype there. You know, but otherwise, like going into 2005, people were excited about Tyler Palco, certainly after the 2004 season. And going into 2003, people were generally excited about Rod Rutherford. But, I mean, you don't have many years where there's a ton of hype for Pitt's quarterback. Um, save for some of these one-off kind of situations where, you know, a young guy, unproven guy, has a big game in the final game. Chad Boy taking the pizza bowl, Kenny Pickett against Miami, so on and so forth. Um, I don't think you have that level of hype this year. I know you don't have that level of hype this year. You know, no, nobody's that excited about Nate Yarnell. And I, I think there was, I think people thought Keaton Slovis could be pretty good, but I don't think they had real hype about it. You know what I mean? Entering 2022. And I think there were enough people who had real questions about Phil Dracovic entering 23. I mean, I even had questions about it. You know I mean? We, when we would talk on, on these podcasts, I would be like, well, We'll see. We're, you know, Pitt's asking him and hoping for him and counting on him to do something he's never done before, which is make it through a full season healthy. Now, I, I wasn't right about that concern, but there were plenty of other concerns that reared their head that made that situation very much untenable with his level of play. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I think I, I would – put more emphasis on the optimistic side, part of the cautious optimism this year than I would have last year. I think people were far more cautious about Phil Dracovic and far more optimistic about Nate Arnell. Is he the biggest question mark on the team though? This might even be a good question for tomorrow since we're already like 19 minutes in here or tw almost 20 minutes in. Um, you know, maybe we can uh, talk about whether or not quarterback is the biggest question mark in the team because there are question marks. I mean, we, we talk about them all the time. What are the biggest question marks facing the team? You know, what, what do they need here? What do they need there? What's the O-line? What's the, the wide receivers? And quarterback is certainly among the question marks. Is it a bigger question mark than the wide receiver position? Understanding that those two are, you know, sort of linked and they're not, you know, you can't really talk about one without the other and one's not going to succeed without the other. But where do you have more questions? Do you have more questions about the quarterback or the wide receivers? Do you have more quarter questions about the quarterback or the O-line depth? You know, do you have more questions about um, the quarterback or, oh, I don't know, the offense? This is a good topic for tomorrow. A little, little teaser here, a little preview. This is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. So you can think about it tonight, and then we can, uh, you know, put your comments in, in, in the uh, 
comment section here put your answers uh, what's the biggest question mark on Pitt's offense this year put it in the uh the comment section here and i'll i'll read those and we can we can make that part of tomorrow's episode but i don't know it's interesting every now and then particularly on a day like memorial day where you know maybe it's a little bit lazier than usual you can sort of let your mind wander and think about quarterbacks of the past and what it's been for Pitt. Uh, certainly in the Narduzzi era, but even if you go back earlier in the 21st century, um, you know when when was the last time you were really excited about a pick quarterback? Was Kenny Pickett in 2017, like heading into 2018? Probably, right? Is there anything else that comes to mind? Anything else I'm forgetting? Oh, and help me out with this top five quarterbacks in the Narduzzi era. I got two. And I guess three if I'm going to include Nick Patty. Help me out. Let me know what you got uh, in the comment section. And of course, like this video and subscribe, youtube.com slash pentalaircom so you don't miss any of our pit video content. Every day we have these morning pit videos. Every Wednesday night we have a live stream at 8 p.m. We have interviews and press conferences, all those kinds of things. And it's all right here at youtube.com slash pantheraircom. So make sure you uh, like and subscribe and check out the website panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com to never miss any of the pit sports news. Football, basketball, and recruiting, we cover it all panther-lair.com thanks for uh, tuning in today hope you had a great weekend hope you enjoy your memorial day have a happy and safe one and we'll catch up with you tomorrow on the morning pit on youtube.com slash panther